Weightlifting is one of the most common forms of exercise that is done in almost every gym in the world. Weightlifting is a challenging yet rewarding hobby to have. It can be done at almost all ages, therefore it is a very diverse activity. You can constantly modify specific exercises easily by changing weight, position, or form to fit your personal needs. Although the barbell squat is a common exercise performed around the world, many do not know how to perform it properly, as you can see in the previous videos. In this video, we will be discussing how to properly and safely perform a barbell squat and what biomechanical principles apply. A squat is performed by lowering of the body close to the ground. You do this by bending your knees while simultaneously pushing your gluteus maximus backwards. You keep your feet planted firmly on the ground to support your stance. The barbell is balanced on your upper trapezius and you keep your shoulders back to prevent the barbell from resting and putting pressure on the neck. Your feet act as a fulcrum that support the knees and hips, which are the effort in the system. The barbell and weight act as the resistance load. Because of this, a squat is considered a third level, a third class lever system. The main muscle that performs the squat is the gluteus maximus, meaning it is the prime mover. The agonist muscle which helps produce the action of a squat are the glutes and quads. The antagonist muscles are the hamstrings and calf muscles. Lastly, to help keep the body in line and stable, the rectus abdominis acts as a stabilizer muscle. First, we are going to discuss the proper equipment that should be used when squatting. For starters, if you are a beginner or do not have someone spotting you, you should use a Smith machine that guides and aids your squat by balancing the weight evenly for you. This ensures that the weight will not topple to one side or the other. Next, it is important to wear proper footing when squatting. It is important to have a shoe with a lot of grip on the bottom to increase friction, to reduce the risk of falling, and to increase the stability. It is also ideal to have shoes that have non-compressible soles with low cushion. This is because when squatting, the feet and body act as the action force on the ground, and the ground therefore produces an equal and opposite upward force on the body called a ground reaction force. It is important to wear these shoes because shoes with less cushion allow for a greater power output because it reduces the amount of force absorbed by the shoe. For example, many weightlifters use Converse as opposed to running shoes because it allows for a greater ground reaction force and power of the muscles. A study that came from the Journal of Sports Sciences compares the use of athletic shoes versus weightlifting shoes by using a 3D motion capture system to look at kinematics in two different squats. The results showed that since weightlifting shoes are non-compressible, they offer more stability and increased strength for the person performing the squat. Next, it is very important to have a stable stance when squatting, unlike the examples at the beginning of the video, which resulted in failures. Stability is defined as resistance of the object to having equilibrium disturbed. So how does one increase stability when squatting? First, one should have a sturdy base of support. They can do this by having feet shoulder width apart and facing forward. By putting our feet shoulder width apart, the center of mass falls directly between our legs and is centered on our body. As the person squats, the center of mass, feet, and barbell should be in a vertical line. This allows the person to have a better overall stability. Another factor that is essential to increase stability is torque. Torque is defined as the tendency of an eccentric force to rotate an object around an axis. Torque is necessary to help keep the shoulders, back, and knees stable. If torque were not present, these body parts would internally rotate and give in, causing the person to fall. Lastly, it is important to use equally distributed weight on both sides of the barbell and to make sure your body is centered along the bar. This helps to create stability. A study posted in the Medical Science Sports Exercise Journal compared a 3D biomechanical analysis of a squat during various stand widths. This study proved that a stance narrower than shoulder width apart causes more shear forces on the knee than shoulder width stances. It also showed that the agonist muscles of the squat, the hamstring, and the gluteus maximus showed more activity in a wider stance than a narrower stance. This proves that a shoulder width stance offers more stability and allows the muscles to be used at a greater rate. So how can this information be helpful in the future? We recommend recording oneself to create a visual guide to assess your own movement while squatting. This would allow you to make sure you are following all protocol we suggested when squatting. One could check the placement of the barbell, 
their stance, their stability, and their center of mass line and check to see that no internal rotation is occurring in the knees or shoulders when squatting. Using this visual information, one could see where they need to improve and better perform a barbell squat. Lastly, we will be showing you a video on how to perform a proper squat. Stand shoulder wide, back straight, tight core, and then go down to 90 degrees. So we don't want to have the butt wink when going down. We want to have a straight back all the way. And as you can see, I am stopping at 90 degrees when I am going down before I press up again. So this is a really basic way of starting squatting. That's all, folks.